Omleria sericiformis. This is the Indian plum, sometimes called the Oso berry. It's easy to identify right now because it's one of the first uh, deciduous plants to leaf out in the early spring. Um, so it tends to come out in March time. And if I scan back a little bit, you'll see there's huge, huge tree shrubs here. Um, they can actually grow up to be five meters tall. And um, I think that they're absolutely beautiful. But they are easy to identify now because the rest of the forest is still barren. I think my dog is about to... No? I thought my dog was going to start barking for you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but they're easy to identify here. We have lance-shaped leaves. I can't get a macro on that, but I'll get a better shot. And some white green flowers. These, um, as their name uh, refers to, actually produce little fruits that are similar to plums. They look like little plums. Um, they're plum in shape and plum shape and plum in color. And um, they're actually in the apple and plum fa uh, family. No, no surprise there. Um, the other fantastic way to identify them is that they actually, on warmer days, uh, do smell a bit like cat urine. And um, so if you're ever in the woods and you do smell some sort of overwhelming thing on a hot day, look around for one of these trees, because um, it's probable that it is coming from these flowers. Uh, but still, uh, they're rather tasty, as it turns out. Not the flowers themselves, but the actual leaves. Um, when you crush them, they smell like cucumber, and actually they are edible, um, and they do actually taste like cucumber as well. Um, I'm going to eat one right now, as a matter of fact. These trees can be found um, anywhere from uh, B.C. all the way down to Santa Barbara County in California, um, and they grow in moist riparian zones all the way up to drier, higher climates as well. Um, it's a very versatile type of tree and had many uses by native first people. Um, those uses included uh, the the bark was made into a tea. Um, twigs were chewed for both uh, anesthetic qualities and as an aphrodisiac, um, which I find kind of amusing uh, that it would be used for those two purposes, which seem very contrary to me. Um, but it's fun. Um, the other fantastic thing about these trees um, is that they're actually dioecious, um, and what that means is that each tree is either male or female. It produces either male or female flowers, um, and that's relatively uncommon. Only 6% of all angiosperms are flowering plants um, um, are dioecious. 85% are actually what are called um, hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female parts contained within the same flower. So if you were to gather some flowers from this tree, you could, um, with a dissecting kit, um, uh, dissect them and take a look to see whether they had pistil or stamen. And um, if it lacked a pistil, then it was a male flower. If it, if it lacked a, a stamen, um, then it is a female flower. And only the female trees will produce fruit, um, not surprisingly, because they contain the eggs. Um, so this is the beautiful Indian plum. Um, I encourage you to go out into the woods and pick a leaf off. Um, and take a taste actually first I first I encourage you to um, actually acquire a book um, Native Plants of the Pacific Northwest um, Pojar uh, is one of the uh, authors and um, make sure that you're identifying the correct tree um, and then make sure that you're taking a look to see that the leaves are not toothed and that they're lance shaped um, and crush it to make sure that it smells like cucumber the, it's only the younger leaves that will actually taste like cucumber after that they do get rather bitter so you'll want to do this soon, um, and we're March 25th or something right now, so you'll want to do it relatively close to this time, um, or this time next year, and um, let's take a taste, and we'll visit this tree again in June when the berries come, um, and maybe we'll see some birds feasting on the berries, and we ourselves can try them. Uh, they are edible in small quantities, so um, enjoy.